This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. The Sayings of Confucius From the Harvard Classics, 1909-1914 Edited by Charles W. Eliot Introductory Note The name Confucius is the Latinized form of the Chinese characters Kong Fu Zi, meaning the Master Kong. The bearer of this name was born of an ancient and distinguished family in the district of Zhou, in the current province of Shandong, China, B.C. 551. His father was a soldier of reputation and governor of Zhou, but not a man of wealth. Confucius married at nineteen, and in his early manhood held a minor office, but within a few years he became a public teacher, and soon attracted numerous disciples. Rising in reputation, he was invited to the court of Zhou, where he investigated the traditional ceremonies and maxims of the ruling dynasty and in the following year visited another state where he studied the ancient music. When he was nearly fifty, in the year 500 BC, he again took office, becoming in turn chief magistrate of the town of Chung Tu, assistant superintendent of works to the ruler of Lu, and finally minister of crime. In spite of almost miraculous efficiency, he lost the support of his ruler in 496 B.C., and until his death in 478 B.C., he wandered from state to state, sometimes well treated, sometimes enduring severe hardships, always saddened by the refusal of the turbulent potentates to be guided by his beneficent counsels. No sooner was he dead, however, than his wisdom was recognized by peasant and emperor alike. Admiration rose to veneration, veneration to worship. Sacrifices were offered to him, temples built in his honor, and a cult established which has lasted almost two thousand years. Confucius did not regard himself as an innovator, but as the conservator of ancient truth and ceremonial propriety. He dealt with neither theology nor metaphysics, but with moral and political conduct. The Lunyu, Analects or Sayings of Confucius, were probably compiled, says Legg, by the disciples of the disciples of the sage, making free use of the written memorials concerning him which they had received, and the oral statements which they had heard from their several masters. And we shall not be far wrong if we determine its date as about the beginning of the third or the end of the fourth century before Christ. End of the introductory note This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. The Sayings of Confucius from the Harvard Classics, edited by Charles W. Eliot. Book 1 1. The Master said, In learning and straightway practicing, is there not pleasure also? When friends gather round from afar, do we not rejoice? Whom lack of fame cannot fix, is not he a gentleman? 2. Yu Zhu said, A dutiful son and brother is seldom fond of thwarting those over him. A man unwilling to thwart those over him is never given to crime. A gentleman nurses the roots. When the root has taken, the truth will grow and what are the roots of love but the duty of son and of brother? 3. The Master said, Honeyed words and flattering looks seldom speak of love. 4. 
Cheng Zhu said, Thrice daily I ask myself, Have I been unfaithful in dealing for others? Have I been untrue to friends? Do I practice what I preach? 5. The Master said, To guide a land of a thousand chariots, on our business, be true and sparing, love the people and time thy claims upon them. 6. The Master said, The young should be dutiful at home, modest abroad, heedful and true, full of goodwill for the many, close friends with love, and should they have strength to spare, let them spend it upon the arts. 7. Susia said, If a man honor worth and forsake lust, serve father and mother with all his strength, be ready to give his life for the king, and keep faith with his friends, though men may call him rude, I call him learned. 8. The master said, Of a gentleman who is frivolous, non stand in awe, nor can his learning be sound. Make faithfulness and truth thy masters. Have no friends unlike thyself. Be not ashamed to mend thy faults. 9. Cheng Zhu said, Respect death and recall forefathers. The good in men will again grow sturdy. 10. Chu Qin said to Chu Kung, The master, on coming to a country, learns all about the government. Does he ask, or is it told him? Chu Kung said, The master learns it by his warmth and honesty, by politeness, modesty, and yielding. The way that the master asks is unlike other men's asking. 11. The master said, As long as his father lives, a son should study his wishes. After he is dead, he should study his life. If for three years he does not forsake his father's ways, he may be called dutiful. 12. Yu Zhu said, In daily courtesy, ease is of price. This was the beauty of the old king's ways. This they followed in small and great. But knowing this, it is not right to give way to ease unchecked by courtesy. This also is wrong. 13. Yu Zhu said, if promises hug the right, word can be kept. If attentions are bounded by courtesy, shame will be banished. Heroes may be worshipped if we choose them right. 14. The master said, A gentleman who is not a greedy eater, nor a lover of ease at home, who is earnest indeed and careful of speech, who seeks the righteous and profits by them, may be called fond of learning. 15. Tzu Kung said, Poor, but no flatterer, rich, but not proud. How were that? Good, said the master, but better still were poor, yet merry, rich, yet courteous. Tzu Kung said, Where the poem says, If ye cut, if ye file, if ye polish and grind, is that what is meant? The master said, now I can talk a poetry to thee, Zhu. Given a clue, thou canst find the way. 16. The master said, Not to be known should not grieve you. Grieve that you know not men. End of Book 1
but will be void of shame. Guide them by example, subdue them by courtesy, they will learn shame, and will come to be good. 4. The Master said, At fifteen I was bent on study, at thirty I could stand, at forty doubt ceased, at fifty I understood the laws of heaven, at sixty my ears obeyed me, at seventy I could do as my heart lusted, and never swerve from right. 5. Meng Yi asked the duty of a son. The master said, Obedience. As Fan Chi, a disciple, was driving him, the master said, Meng Sun asked me the duty of a son. I answered, Obedience. What did ye mean, said Fan Chi, to serve our parents with courtesy whilst they live, said the master to bury them with all courtesy when they die, and to worship them with all courtesy. 6. Meng Wu asked the duty of a son. The master said, What weighs on your father and mother is concern for your health. 7. Su Yu, a disciple, asked the duty of a son. The master said, Today a man is called dutiful if he keeps his father and mother. But we keep both our dogs and horses, and unless we honour parents, is it not all one? 8. Su Hsia asked the duty of a son. The master said, Our manner is the hard part. For the young to be a stay in toil, and leave the wine and cakes to their elders, is this to fulfil their duty? 9. The master said, If I talk all day to Hui, the master's favourite disciple, Yen Yuan, like a dullard, he never stops me, but when he is gone, if I pry into his life, I find he can do what I say. No, Hui is no dullard. 10. The master said, look at a man's acts, watch his motives, find out what pleases him. Can the man evade you? Can the man evade you? 11. The master said, Who keeps the older kindle and adds new knowledge is fitted to be a teacher. 12. The master said, A gentleman is not a vessel. 13. Su Kung asked, What is a gentleman? The master said, He puts words into deed first and sorts what he says to the deed. 14. The master said, A gentleman is broad and fair. The vulgar are biased and petty. 15. The master said, Study without thought is vain. Thought without study is dangerous. 16. The master said, Work on strange doctrines does harm. 17. The master said, You, the disciple Su Lu, shall I teach thee what is understanding? To know what we know and know what we do not know that is understanding. 18. Su Chang, a disciple, studied with an eye to pay. The master said, Listen much, keep silent when in doubt, and always take heed of the tongue. Thou wilt make few mistakes. See much, beware of pitfalls, and always give heed to thy walk. Thou wilt have little to rue. If thy words are seldom wrong, Thy deeds leave little to rue, pay will follow. 19. Duke I, Duke of Lu during Confucius' closing years, asked, What should be done to make the people loyal? Confucius answered, Exalt the straight, set aside the crooked, the people will be loyal. Exalt the crooked, set aside the straight, the people will be disloyal. 20. Chi Kang, head of the Chi clan during Confucius' closing years, asked how to make the people lowly, faithful and willing. The master said, Behave with dignity, they will be lowly. Be pious and merciful, they will be faithful. Exalt the good, teach the unskillful, they will grow willing. 21. One said to Confucius, Why are ye not in power, sir? The master answered, What does the book say of a good son? An always dutiful son who is a friend to his brothers showeth the way to rule. 
This also is to rule. What need to be in power? 22. The master said, Without truth I know not how man can live. A cart without a cross-pole, a carriage without harness. How could they be moved? 23. Su Chang asked whether we can know what is to be ten generations hence. The master said, The yin inherited the manners of the hisia. The harm and the good that they wrought them is known. The chu inherited the manners of the yin. The harm and the good that they wrought them is known. And we may know what is to be, even a hundred generations hence, when others follow chu. The Yin, the Hsia, and the Chu were the three dynasties that had ruled China up till the time of Confucius. 24. The Master said, To worship the ghosts of strangers is fawning. To see the right and not do it is want of courage. End of Book 2 of the Sayings of Confucius This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. The Sayings of Confucius From the Harvard Classics, 1909-1914 Edited by Charles W. Eliot Book 3 1. Of the Chi having eight rows of dancers in his hall, Confucius said, If this is to be born, what is not to be born? 2. At the end of the worship, the three clans made use of the Yung hymn. The master said, The dukes and princes assist, solemn is the son of heaven. What sense has this in the hall of the three clans? 3. The master said, A man without love, what is courtesy to him? A man without love, what is music to him? 4. Lin Fang asked, What is the life of ceremony? The master said, A great question. At high tides, waste is worse than thrift. At burials, grief outweighs nicety. 5. The master said, The wild tribes have kings, whilst the realm of Xia is without. 6. The Qi worshipped on Mount Tai. The master said to Rang Yu, Canst thou not stop this? He answered, I cannot. Alas, said the master, Dost thou set Mount Tai below Lin Fang? 7. The master said, A gentleman has no rivalries except perhaps in archery, and then, as bowing he joins the winners, or steps down to see the loser drink, throughout the struggle he is still the gentleman. 8. Tzu Xia asked, What is the meaning of Her cunning smiles, her dimples light, Her lovely eyes so clear and bright, the ground not yet with colours dight. The master said, Colouring follows groundwork. Then does courtesy follow after, said Zixia. Shang, said the master, thou hast hit my meaning. Now I can talk of poetry to thee. 9. The master said, I can speak of the manners of Xia, but for Qi witnesses fail. I can speak of the manners of Yin, but for Sung witnesses fail. This is due to their dearth of books and great men. Were there enough of these, they would witness for me. 
10. The master said, After the drink offering at the great sacrifice, I have no wish to see more. 11. One asked about the words of the great sacrifice. 12. The master said, I do not understand them. Could one understand them, he would overlook the world as I this, and he pointed to his palm. 13. Worship as though those ye worship stood before you. Worship the spirits as though they stood before you. The master said, If I take no part in the sacrifice, it is none to me. 14. Wang Sun Jia said, What is the meaning of, It is better to court the kitchen god than the god of the home? Not at all, said the master. A sin against heaven is past praying for. 15. The master said, Two lines of kings have passed beneath the ken of Jo. How rich in art is Jo. It is Jo I follow. 16. On entering the great temple, the master asked how each thing was done. One said, Who says that the man of Zhou's son has a knowledge of ceremony? On entering the great temple, he asked how each thing is done. On hearing this, the master said, Such is the ceremony. 17. The master said, To pierce through the target does not score in archery, because men differ in strength. This was the old rule. 18. Zhegong wished to do away with the sheep offering at the new moon. The master said, Thou lovest the sheep, Z. I love the right. 19. The master said, Treat the king with all courtesy. Men call it fawning. 20. Duke Ding asked how a king should behave to his ministers, how ministers should serve their king. Confucius answered, A king should behave with courtesy to his ministers. Ministers should serve their king faithfully. 21. The master said, The poem, The Osprey, is glad, but not wanton. It is sad, but not morbid. 22. Duke Ai asked Zai Wo about the shrines of the garden spirits. Zai Wo answered, The Xia emperors grew furs round them. The men of Yin grew cypress, the men of Zhou grew chestnut, meaning jest not over holy matters. On hearing this, the master said, I do not speak of what is ended, chide what is settled, or find fault with what is past. 23. The master said, How shallow was Guan Zhong! But, said one, was not Guan Zhong thrifty? Guan owned Sangui, and in his household none doubled offices, said the master. Was that thrift? At least Guan Zhong was versed in courtesy. The master said, Kings screen their gates with trees. Guan, too, had trees to screen his gate. When two kings make merry together, they have a stand for the turned-down cups. Guan had a turned-down cup stand too. If Guan was versed in courtesy, who is not versed in courtesy? 24. The master said to the chief musician of Lu, How to play music may be known. At first each part in unison, then a swell of harmony, 
each part distinct, rolling on to the finish. 25. The warden of Yi asked to see Confucius, saying, No gentleman has ever come here whom I have failed to see. The followers presented him. On leaving, he said, My lads, why lament your fall? The world has long been astray. Heaven will make of the master a warning bell. 26. The master said, All beautiful and noble is the music of Shao. The music of Wu is as beautiful, but less noble. 27. The master said, Rank without bounty, Ritual without reverence, Mourning without grief, Why should I cast them a glance? End of Book 3This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Kathy of www.skippopscratch.com. The Sayings of Confucius from the Harvard Classics. Edited by Charles W. Eliot. Book 4. 1. The Master said, Love makes a spot beautiful. Who chooses not to dwell in love? Has he got wisdom? 2. The master said, Loveless men cannot bear need long. They cannot bear fortune long. Loving hearts find peace in love. Clever heads find profit in it. 3. The master said, Love can alone love others, or hate others. 4. The master said, a heart set on love will do no wrong. 5. The Master said, Wealth and honors are what men desire, but abide not in them by help of wrong. Lowliness and want are hated of men, but forsake them not by help of wrong. Shorn of love is a gentleman worthy the name? Not for one moment may a gentleman sin against love, not in flurry and haste, nor yet in utter overthrow. 6. The Master said, A friend to love, a foe to evil, I have yet to meet. A friend to love will set nothing higher. In love's service, a foe to evil will let no evil touch him. Were a man to give himself to love, but for one day, I have seen no one whose strength would fail him. Such men there may be, but I have not seen one. 7. The Master said, a man and his faults are of a piece. By watching his faults, we learn whether love be his. 8. The Master said, To learn the truth at daybreak and die at eve were enough. 9. The Master said, A scholar in search of truth who is ashamed of poor clothes and poor food, it is idle talking to. 10. The Master said, a gentleman has no likes and no dislikes below heaven. He follows right. 11. The master said, Gentlemen cherish worth, the vulgar cherish dirt. Gentlemen trust in justice, the vulgar trust in favor. 12. The master said, The chase of gain is rich in hate. 13. The master said, what is it to sway a kingdom by courteous yielding? Who cannot by courteous yielding sway a kingdom? What can he know of courtesy? 14. The master said, Be not concerned at want of place. Be concerned that thou stand thyself. Sorrow not at being unknown, but seek to be worthy of note. 15. The master said, One thread shen, one runs through all my teaching. Yes, said Sing Tzu. After the master had left, the disciples asked what was meant. Sing Tzu said, The master's teaching all hang on faithfulness and fellow-feeling. 16. The master said, A gentleman considers what is right, the vulgar consider what will pay.
17. The master said, At sight of worth, think to grow like it. When evil meets thee, search thine own heart. 18. The master said, A father or mother may be gently chidden. If they will not bend, be the more lowly, but persevere, nor murmur if trouble follow. 19. The master said, Whilst thou father and mother live, do not wander afar. If thou must travel, hold a set course. 20. The master said, If for three years a son do not forsake his father's ways, he may be called dutiful. 21. The master said, A father's and a mother's age must be borne in mind, with joy on the one hand, fear on the other. 22. The master said, Men of old were loath to speak, lest a word that they could not make good should shame them. 23. The master said, Who contains himself goes seldom wrong. 24. The master said, A gentleman wishes to be slow to speak and quick to act. 25. The master said, Good is no hermit, it has ever neighbors. 26. Su Yu said, Preaching to princes brings disgrace, nagging at friends estrangement. End of Book 4「a girl might marry him. In him was no crime, though he has been in bonds. He gave him his daughter to wife. Of Nan Young, the master said, When right prevails, he will not be neglected. When wrong prevails, he will escape law and punishment. He gave him his brother's daughter to wife. 2. Of Su Qian, the master said, What a gentleman he is! But could he have grown to be a man like this were there no gentleman in Lu? 3. Su Kung asked, And what of me? Thou art a vessel, said the master. What kind of vessel? A rich temple vessel. 4. Young, said one, has love, but he has not a glib tongue. The master said, What is the good of a glib tongue? Fighting men with tongue-craft breeds much bitterness. Whether love be his, I do not know, but what is the good of a glib tongue? 5. The master moved Chi Tiao Kai to take office. He answered, For this I lack confidence. The master was pleased. 6. The master said, Truth makes no way. Let me go afloat and scour the sea, and you shall follow me. When Su Lu heard this, he was glad. The master said, You is more venturesome than I, but he does not know how to take things. 7. Meng Wu asked whether Su Lu had love. The master said, I do not know. He asked again. The master said, A land of a thousand chariots might give you charge of its levies, but whether he have love, I do not know. And how about Chiu? A town of a thousand households, a clan of a hundred chariots, might make Chiu governor, but whether he have love, I do not know. And how about Chi? Girt with his sash, erect in the court, Chi might entertain the guests, but whether he have love, I do not know. 8. The master said to Zhu Kung, Who is abler, thou or Hui? He answered, How dare I aspire to Hui? If he hear one thing, Hui understands ten. When I hear one thing, I understand too. The master said, Thou art not his peer, I grant, thou art not his peer. 9. Tsai Yu slept in the daytime. The master said, Rotten wood cannot be carved, nor are dung walls plastered. Why chide with you? The master said, 
In my first dealings with men, I hearkened to their words, and took their deeds on trust. Now in dealing with men, I hearkened to their words, and watched their deeds. I righted this on you. 10. The master said, I have met no firm man. One answered, Shen Cheng. The master said, Cheng is passionate. How can he be firm? 11. Tzu Kung said, What I do not wish to have done unto me, I likewise wish not to do unto others. The master said, That is still beyond thee, Tzu. 12. Tzu Kung said, We may listen to the master's culture, but on life and on the ways of heaven his words are denied us. 13. Until Tzu Lu could carry out what he heard, he only dreamed to hear more. 14. Tzu Kung asked, Why was Kung Wen styled cultured? The master said, He was quick and fond of learning, not ashamed to ask those beneath him, and that is why he was called cultured. 15. Of Su Chen, the master said, In four ways he was a gentleman. His own life was modest. He honored the man whom he served. He was kind in rearing the people. He was just in his calls upon them. 16. The master said, Yen Ping was versed in friendship. Familiarity breeds courtesy. 17. The master said, Sang Wen lodged his tortoise with hills on the pillars, reeds on the uprights. Was this his good sense? 18. Su Cheng said, Su Wen was thrice made minister without show of gladness, and thrice left office with unmoved face. He was careful to unfold his rule to the new minister. What do you think of him? He was faithful, said the master. But had he love? I do not know, said the master. How should this amount to love? When Tsui slew the king of Qi, Chen Wen forsook ten teams of horses and left the land. On coming to another kingdom, he said, Like my lord Tsui, and left it. On coming to the second kingdom, he said, Like my lord Tsui, and left it. What do you think of him? He was pure, said the master. But had he love? I do not know, said the master. How should this amount to love? 19. Chi Wen thought thrice before acting. On hearing this, the master said, Twice, that is enough. 20. The master said, Whilst peace reigned in the land, Ning Wu showed understanding. When troubles came, he turned simpleton. His understanding is within our reach. Such simplicity is beyond our reach. 21. When he was in Chen, the master said, Home, I must go home. My batch of boys, ambitious and hasty, their minds cultured, their schooling ended, know not what needs fashioning. 22. The master said, as Po Yi and Chu Qi never recalled past wickedness, the foes they made were few. 23. The master said, Who would call Wei Sheng Kao straight? A man begged him for vinegar. He begged it from a neighbor and gave it. 24. The master said, Honeyed words, flattering looks, and overdone humility. So Chi Ming thought shameful, and so do I. To hide ill will and ape friendship, so Chi Ming thought shameful, and so do I. 25. As Yan Yuan and Chi Lu were sitting with him, the master said, Why not each of you tell me his wishes? Tzu Lu said, Carriage and horses I would have, and robes of fine fur to share with my friends, and would wear them out all free from care. Yan Yuan said, To make no boast of talent nor show of merit were my wish. Tzu Lu said, we should like to hear your wishes, sir. The master said, To make the old folk happy, to be true to friends, to have a heart for the young. 26. The master said, It is finished. I have met no one who can see his own faults and arraign for himself within. 27. The master said, In a hamlet of ten households there must be men faithful and true as I. Why is there no one as fond of learning? End of Book 5 This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, visit LibriVox.org. This reading by Carl Manchester, 2007
The Sayings of Confucius From the Harvard Classics Book 6 1. The Master said, Young, the disciple, Chung Kung, might fill the seat of a prince. And might Su Sang Po Su? asked Chung Kung. Yes, said the Master, but he is lax. To be lax in his claims on the people might be right, said Chung Kung, were he stern to self, but to be lax to self and lax to others must surely be over lax. The Master said, what Jung says is true. 2. Duke I asked which disciples were fond of learning. Confucius answered, Yen Hui, the disciple Yen Yuan, loved learning. His anger fell not astray, he made no mistake twice. By ill luck his life was cut short. Now that he is gone, I hear of no one who is fond of learning. 3. Su Hua, the disciple Kung Si Hua, or Kung Hisi Chi, having been sent to Chi, the disciple Jan asked for grain to give to his mother. The master said, give her a bushel. He asked for more. The master said, give her half a quarter. Jan gave her twenty-five quarters. The master said, On his way to Chi, Chi was drawn by sleek horses clad in fine furs. A gentleman, I have heard, helps the needy. He does not swell riches. When Yuan Su, a disciple, was governor, his pay was nine hundred measures of grain. On his refusing it, the master said, Not so. Why not take it? and give it to thy neighbours and country folk. 4. Of Chung Kung the master said, If the calf of a bridled cow be red and horned, though men be shy to offer him, will the hills and streams disdain him? 5. The master said, For three months together, the heart of Huey, the disciple, Yen Yuan, never sinned against love. The others may hold out for a day or a month, but no more. 6. Chi Kang, the head of the Chi clan after the death of Chi Huan, asked whether Chung Yu, the disciple Su Lu, were fit for power. The master said, Yu has character. What would governing be to him? And Su, the disciple Su Kung, is he fit for power? Su is intelligent. What would governing be to him? And Chi Yu, the disciple, Jan Yu, is he fit for power? Chi Yu has ability. What would governing be to him? 7. The Chi sent to make Min Su Qin, a disciple, governor of Pi. Min Su Qin said, Make some good excuses for me. If he send again, I must be across the when. 8. When Po Niu, a disciple, was ill, the master went to ask after him. Grasping his hand through the window, he said, He is dying. It is our lot. But why this man of such an illness? Why this man of such an illness? 9. The master said, what a man was Hui, the disciple Yan Yuan. A dish of rice, a gourd of water, in a low alleyway. No man can bear such misery. Yet Hui never fell from mirth. What a man he was. 10. Jan Chiyu, the disciple Jan Yu, said, Pleasure in the master's path I do not lack. I lack strength. The master said, who lacks strength faints by the way. Thou puttest a curb upon thee. 11. The master said to Su Hisia, Read to become a gentleman. Do not read as the vulgar do. 12. 
when Su Yu was governor of Wu Cheng, a town in Lu, belonging to the Qi. The master said, Hast thou gotten any men? He answered, I have Tan Tai Mei Ming. When walking he will not take a short cut. He has never come to my house except on business. 13. The master said, Men Chi Fan never bragged. He was covering the rear in a rout. But when the gate was reached, he whipped up his horse and cried, Not courage kept me behind. My horse won't go. 14. The master said, Unless glib as the reed a toe, and handsome as chow of sung, escape is hard in the times that be. 15. The master said, Who can go out except by the door? Why is it that no one keeps to the way? 16. The master said, Nature outweighing art begets roughness. Art outweighing nature begets pedantry. Art and nature, well blent, make a gentleman. 17. The master said, Man is born upright. If he cease to be so and live, he is lucky to escape. 18. The master said, Who knows does not rank with him who likes, nor he who likes with him who is glad therein. 19. The master said, To men above the common we may speak of things above the common. To men below the common we must not speak of things above the common. 20. Fan Chi, a disciple, asked, What is wisdom? The master said, To foster right amongst the people, to honour the ghosts of the dead, whilst keeping aloof from them, may be called wisdom. He asked, What is love? The master said, To rank the effort above the prize may be called love. 21. The master said, Wisdom delights in water, love delights in hills. Wisdom is stirring, love is quiet. Wisdom enjoys life, love grows old. 22. The master said, By one revolution, Qi might grow as Lu. By one revolution, Lu might win to truth. 23. The master said, a drinking horn that is no horn? What a horn! What a drinking horn! 24. Sai Wo, a disciple, said, Were a man who loves told that there is a man in a well, would he go in after him? The master said, Why should he? A gentleman might be brought to the well, but not entrapped into it. He may be cheated. He is not to be fooled. 25. The master said, By breadth of reading and the ties of courtesy, a gentleman will also keep from error's path. 26. The master saw Nan Su, the dissolute wife of Duke Ling of Wei. Su Lu was displeased. The master took an oath, saying, If there were sin in me, may heaven forsake me, may heaven forsake me. 27. The master said, the highest goodness is to hold fast the golden mean. Amongst the people it has long been rare. 28. Su Kung said, To treat the people with bounty and help the many. How were that? Could it be called love? The master said, What has this to do with love? Would it not be holiness? Both Yao and Shun, two emperors of the golden age, still yearned for this. In seeking a foothold for self, love finds a foothold for others. Seeking light for itself, it enlightens others also. To learn from the near at hand may be called the key to love. End of Book 6 This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. The Sayings of Confucius from the Harvard Classics Edited by Charles W. Eliot Book 7 1. The Master said, A teller 
and not a maker, one who trusts and loves the past. I may be likened to our old tongue. Two. The master said, "A silent communer, an ever hungry learner, a still unflagging teacher. Am I any of these?" Three. The master said, "Neglect of what is good in me, want of thoroughness in study, failure to do the right when told me, lack of strength to overcome faults. These are my sorrows." Four. In his free moments, the master was easy and cheerful. Five. The master said, "How deep is my decay! It is long since I saw the Duke of Chow in a dream." Six, the master said, "Will the right, hold the good one, rest in love, move in art?" Seven, the master said, "From the men who paid in dried meat upwards." I have withheld teaching from no one. Eight. The master said, "Only to those fumbling do I open. Only for those stammering do I find the word. From him who cannot turn the hole when I lift a corner, I desist." Nine. When eating beside a mourner. The master never ate his fill. On days when he had been wailing, the master did not sing. Ten. The master said to Yan Yuan, "I and thou alone can both fill a post when given one, and live unseen when passed by." Zhu Lu said, "Had ye to command three armies, sir?" Who should go with you? No man," said the master. "Ready to fly unarmed at a tiger, or plunge into a river, and die without a pang, should be with me. But one, rather, who is weary before a move and gains his end by well-laid plans." Eleven. The master said. Were shouldering a whip a sure road to riches, I would turn carter. But since there is no sure road, I tread the path I love. Twelve. The master gave heed to devotions, war, and sickness. Thirteen. When a master was in Qi for three months after hearing the shao played. He knew not the taste of meat. I did not suppose, he said, that music could touch such heights. Fourteen. Jen Yu said, "Is the master for the king of Wei?" I will ask him," said Chu Kong. He went in, and said, "What kind of men were Po Yi?" And Shu Qi, worthy men of yore, said the master. Did they rule the past? They sought love and found it. What had they to rule? Chu Kong went out and said, "The master is not on his side." The master said, "Living on coarse rice and water, with bent arm for pillow." Mirth may be ours, but ill-gotten wealth and honors are to me a wandering cloud. Fifteen, the master said. Given a few more years, making fifty for the study of the year, I may be purged from gross sin. Sixteen, the master liked to talk of poetry. History, and the upkeep of courtesy. Of all these, he was fond of talking. 
Seventeen. The Duke of She asked Chu Lu about Confucius. Chu Lu did not answer. The master said, "Why couldst thou not say, 'He is a man so eager that he forgets to eat, whose cares are lost in triumph, unmindful of approaching age'?" Eighteen. The master said. I was not born to understanding. I loved the past, and questioned it earnestly. Nineteen. The master never spake of ghosts or strength, crime or spirits. Twenty. The master said, "Walking three together, I'm sure of teachers. I pick out the good and follow it." I see the bad and shun it. Twenty-one. The master said, "Heaven planted worth in me. What harm can come of Huan Tui?" Twenty-two. The master said, "My boys, do you think that I hide things from you? I hide nothing." One who keeps from his boys naught that he does, such as chill. Twenty-three. The four things the master taught were culture, conduct, faithfulness, and truth. Twenty-four. The master said, "A holy man I shall not live to see. Enough could I find a gentleman." A good man I should not live to see. Enough could I find a steadfast one. But when nothing poses as something, cloud as substance, want as riches, steadfastness must be rare. Twenty-five. The master angled, but did not fish with a net. He shot, but not at birds sitting. Twenty-six. The master said, "There may be men who act without understanding why. I do not. To listen much, pick out the good and follow it; to see much and ponder it. This comes next to understanding." Twenty-seven. It was ill talking to the Hu villagers. A lad having been admitted. The disciples wondered. The master said, "I allow his coming, not what is to come. Why be so harsh? If a man cleanses himself to gain admission, I admit his cleanness, but go not bail for his past." Twenty-eight. The master said, "Is love so far a thing?" I yearn for love, and lo, love is come. Twenty-nine. A judge of Chen asked whether Duke of Chao knew courtesy. Confucius answered, "He knew courtesy." After Confucius had left, the judge beckoned Wu Ma Qi to his side, and said, "I had heard." That gentleman of no party, but are they two for party? The prince married a Wu of the same name as himself, and called her Miss Chu of Wu. If the prince knew courtesy, who does not know courtesy? When Wu Ma Qi told this to the master, he said, "How lucky I am! If I make a slip." Men are sure to know it. Thirty. When any one sang to the master and sang well, he would make him repeat it and join in. Thirty-one. The master said, "I have no more culture than others. To live as a gentleman is not yet mine." Thirty-two. 
The master said, "How dare I lay claim to holiness or love? A man of endless craving, I might be called, an unflagging teacher, but nothing more." That is just what we disciples cannot learn," said Kung Shi Hua. Thirty-three. The master being very ill, Su Lu asked leave to pray. The master said, "Is it the custom?" "It is," answered Su Lu. "The memorials say, 'Pray to the spirits in heaven above and on earth below.'" The master said, "Long lasting has my prayer been." Thirty-four. The master said. Waste begets self-will, thrift begets meanness, but better be mean than self-willed. Thirty-five. The master said, "A gentleman is calm and spacious; the vulgar are always fretting." Thirty-six. The master was friendly, yet dignified. He inspired awe. But not fear. He was respectful, yet easy. End of book seven. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer. Please visit LibriVox.org. Recorded by Paul Z, Hong Kong, January the third, two thousand and seven. The sayings of Confucius from the Harvard Classics, edited by Charles W. Eliot, Book Eight. One. The master said. Typo might indeed be called a man of highest worth. Thrice he gave up the throne. Men were at a loss how to praise him. Two, the master said. Without a sense of courtesy, attentions grow into fussiness. Heed turns to fearfulness. Courage becomes unruliness. Uprightness. Turns to harshness. When the gentry are true to kinsmen, love will thrive among the people. Three. When Zhang Zhu lay sick, he summoned his disciples and said, "Uncover my feet, uncover my arms." The poem says, "As though a deep gulf were yawning below." As crossing thin ice, take heed how ye go. Till this day and beyond, I have walked unscathed, my boys. Four. When Zhang Zhu lay sick, Meng Cheng came to ask after him. Zhang Zhu said, "When a bird is to die, his note is sad. When a man is to die." His words are true. There are three duties that a gentleman prizes: to banish from his bearing violence and levity, to sort his face to the truth, to purge his speech of the low and unfair. As for temple matters, there are officers to mind them. Five, Zhang Zhu said. Out of knowledge to learn from ignorance, out of wealth to learn from penury. Having to seem wanting, real to seem shadow. When gain said, never answering back. I had once a friend who would act thus. Six, Zhang Zhu said, a man to whom an orphan stripling or the fate of a hundred townships may be entrusted. And whom no crisis can corrupt, 
Is he not a gentleman? A gentleman indeed? 7. Zhang Zhu said, The scholar had need to be strong and bold, for his burden is heavy, the road is far. His burden is love. Is it not a heavy one? Death is the goal. Is that not far? 8. The master said, Poetry rouses, courtesy upholds us, music is our crown. 9. The master said, The people may be made to follow, they cannot be made to understand. 10. The master said, Love of daring, inflamed by poverty, leads to crime. A man without love, if deeply ill-treated, will turn to crime. 11. The master said, All the glorious gifts of the Duke of Zhao, if coupled with pride and meanness, would not be worth one glance. 12. The master said, A man to whom three years of study have borne no fruit would be hard to find. 13. The master said, A man who loves learning with simple faith, who to mend his life is content to die, will not enter a tottering kingdom, nor stay in a land distraught. When right prevails below heaven, he is seen. When wrong prevails, he is unseen. When right prevails, he would blush to be poor and lowly. When wrong prevails, wealth and honours would shame him. 14. The Master said, When not in office, discuss not policy. 15. The Master said, In the first days of the music Master Qi, how grand was the ending of the Quan Ju, how it filled the ear. 16. The Master said, Of such as are eager but not straight, shallow but not simple, dull but not truthful, I will know nothing. 17. The Master said, Study as though the time were short, as one who fears to lose. 18. The Master said, It was sublime how Xuan and you sway the world and make light of it. 19. The Master said, how great was Yao in kingship! Sublime! Heaven alone is great. Yao alone was patterned on it. Boundless. Men's words fail them. Sublime the work he did. Dazzling the wealth of his culture. 20. Xuan had five ministers. An order reigned below heaven. King Wu said, Ten in number are my able ministers. Confucius said, The dearth of talent, is not that the truth? The days when you succeeded Tang were rich in talent, yet there were but nine men in all, and one of these was a woman. The utmost worth was the worth of Zhao. Lord of two-thirds of the earth, he submitted all to Yin. 21. The Master said, I find no flaw in you. Frugal in eating and drinking, he was lavish to the ghosts of the dead. Ill-clad, he was gorgeous in cap and gown. His home a hovel, he poured out his strength upon dikes and ditches. 
no kind of flaw can I find in you. End of book eight. Recorded by Paul Z. Hong Kong, January the third, two thousand and seven. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recorded by Paul Z, Hong Kong, January the 4th, 2007. The Sayings of Confucius from the Harvard Classics, edited by Charles W. Eliot. Book 9 1. The master seldom spake of gain, doom, or love. 2. A man from the Daxiang village said, The great Confucius, with his vast learning, has made no name in anything. When a master heard it, he said to his disciples, what shall I take up? Shall I take up charioteering? Shall I take up bowmanship? I must take up charioteering. 3. The master said, A linen cap is correct. Today, silk is worn. It is cheap, and I follow the many. To bow below is correct. Today, it is done above. This is overweening, and, despite the many, I bow below. 4. From four things the master was quite free. He had no by views. He knew not must, or shall, or I. 5. When the master was affrighted in Kuang, he said, Since the death of King Wen, is not this the home of culture? Had heaven condemned culture, later mortals had missed their share in it. If heaven uphold culture, what can the men of Kuang do to me? 6. A high minister said to Chu Kong, the master must be a holy man. He can do so many things. Zhu Gong said, Heaven has indeed well nigh endowed him with holiness, and he is many sided too. When the master heard it, he said, Does the minister know me? Being lowly born, I learned many and humble trade in my youth. But has a gentleman's skill in many things? No, in few things. Lao said the master would say, Having no post, I learned a craft. 7. The master said, Have I in truth understanding? I have no understanding. But if a yoku asks me aught in an empty way, I tap it on his side and that, and sift it to the bottom. 8. The master said, The phoenix comes not, nor does the river give forth a sign. All is over with me. 9. When a master saw folk clad in mourning, or in robes of state, or else a blind man, he made a point of rising, even for the young, or, if he were passing by, of quickening his step. 10. Yen Yuan heaved aside and said, As I gaze, it grows higher, more remote as I dig. I sight in front, next moment astern. The master tempts men forward deftly, bit by bit. He widened me with culture. He bound me with courtesy. Until my strength was spent, I had no power to stop. The goal seemed at hand, 
I longed to reach it, but the way was closed. 11. When the master was very ill, Zhu Lu moved the disciples to act as ministers. During a better spell, the master said, Yo has long been feigning. This show of ministers, when I have no ministers, whom can it deceive? Will it deceive heaven? Moreover, is it not better to die in your arms, my boys, than to die in the arms of ministers? And if I lack a grand burial, shall I die by the roadside? 12. Zhu Gong said, Were a beauteous jade stone mine, ought I to hide it away in a case, or seek a good price and sell it? The master said, Sell it, sell it. I tarry for my price. 13. The master wished to make his home among the nine tribes. One said, They are low, but could ye? The master said, Where a gentleman has his home, can aught live that is low? 14. The master said, After I came back from Wei to Lu, the music was set straight, and each song found its place. 15. The master said, To serve men of high rank when abroad, and father and brothers when at home, to dread slackness in graveside duties, and be no fraud to wine. To which of these have I won? 16. As he stood by a stream, the master said, Hasting away like this, day and night without stop. 17. The master said, I have found none who love good as they love women. 18. The master said, In making a mound, if I stop when one basketful more would end it, it is I that stop. In leveling ground, if I go on after throwing down one basketful, it is I that proceed. 19. The master said, Never listless when spoken to, such was Hui. 20. Speaking of Yan Yuan, the master said, The pity of it. I have seen him go on, but never have I seen him stop. 21. The master said, Some sprouts do not blossom, some blossoms bear no fruit. 22. The master said, All is due to youth. May not tomorrow be bright as today? To men of forty or fifty, who are unknown still, no all is due. 23. The master said, Who would not give ear to a downright word? But to mend is a price. Who would not be pleased by a guiding word? But to ponder the word is a price. With such as give ear, but will not mend, who are pleased, but will not ponder, I can do nothing. 24. The Master said, Make faithfulness and truth thy masters. Have no friends unlike thyself. Be not ashamed to mend thy faults. 25. The master said, Three armies may be robbed of their leader. No wretch can be robbed of his will. 26. The master said, Clad in a tattered, quilted cloak, Yo will stand unabashed amidst robes of fox and badger. Void of hatred and greed, what but good does he do? But when Zhu Lu was ever humming these words, 
the master said this is the way but is it the whole of goodness 27 the master said erst the cold days show how fir and cypress are last to fade 28 the master said the wise are free from doubt love is never waxed the bold have no fears 29 the master said with some we can join in learning but not in aims with others we can join in aims but not in standpoint and with others again in standpoint but not in measures 30 the flowers overhead are dancing in play my thoughts are with thee in thy home far away the master said her thoughts were not with him or how could he be far away end of book 9 recorded by paul z hong kong january the 4th 2007This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recorded by M. L. Cohen, Cleveland, Ohio. The Sayings of Confucius from the Harvard Classics, edited by Charles W. Eliot. Book 10. Among his own country folk, Confucius wore a homely look, like one who has no word to say. In the ancestral temple and at court, his speech was full but cautious. At court, he talked frankly to men of low rank, winningly to men of high rank. In the king's presence, he looked intent and solemn. When the king bade him receive guests, his face seemed to change, his knees to bend. He bowed left and right to those beside him, straightened his robes in front and behind, and sped forward, his elbows spread like wings. When the guest had left, he always reported it, saying, The guest has ceased to look back. Entering the palace gate, he stooped, as though it were too low for him. He did not stand in the middle of the gate, nor step on the threshold. Passing the throne, his face seemed to change, his knees to bend, he spake with bated breath. Mounting the dais, he lifted his robes, bowed his back, and masked his breathing, till it seemed to stop. Coming down, his face relaxed below the first step, and bore a pleased look. From the foot of the steps he sped forward, his elbows spread like wings, and when again in the seat he looked intent at before. When bearing the scepter, his back bent as under too heavy a burden. He held his hands not higher than in bowing, nor lower than in giving a present. He wore an awed look and dragged his feet, as though they were fettered. When presenting royal gifts, his manner was formal, but he was cheerful at the private audience. This gentleman was never arrayed in maroon or scarlet. Even at home he would not don red or purple. In hot weather he wore unlined linen clothes, but always over other garments. Over lambskin he wore black, over fawn he wore white, over foxskin he wore yellow. At home he wore a long fur robe with the right sleeve short. He always had his nightgown half as long again as his body. In the house he wore fox or badger skin for warmth. When out of mourning there was nothing wanting from his girdle. Except for court dress he was sparing of stuff. He did not wear lamb's fur or a black cap on a visit of condolence. On the first day of the moon, he always went to court in court dress. 
On fast days he always donned clothes of pale hue, changed his food, and moved from his wonted seat. He did not dislike his rice cleaned with care, nor his hash chopped small. He did not eat sour or moldy rice, putrid fish or tainted meat. Aught discolored, or high, badly cooked, or out of season, he would not eat. He would not eat what was badly cut, or a dish with the wrong sauce. A choice of meats could not tempt him to eat more than he had the relish for. To wine alone he set no limit, but he did not drink till he got fuddled. He did not drink bought wine, or eat ready-dried market meat. Ginger was never missing at table. He did not eat much. After sacrifice at the palace, he would not keep the meat overnight, at home not more than three days. If kept longer, it was not eaten. He did not talk at meals, nor speak when in bed. Though there were but coarse rice and vegetable soup, he made his offering will all reverence. If his mat were not straight, he would not sit down. When drinking with the villagers, as those with staves left, he left too. At the village exorcisms he donned court dress and stood on the eastern steps. When sending inquiries to another land, he bowed twice and saw his messenger out. On Kang, making him a gift of medicine, he accepted it with a bow, saying, I do not know it, I dare not taste it. His stables having been burnt, the master on his return from court said, Is anyone hurt? He did not ask after the horses. When the king sent him baked meat, he set his mat straight and tasted it first. When the king sent him raw meat, he had it cooked for sacrifice. When the king sent a living beast, he had him reared. When dining in attendance on the king, the king made the offering. Confucius ate of things first. On the king coming to see him in sickness, he turned his face to the east and had his court dress spread across him with the girdle over it. When summoned by the king, he walked without waiting for his carriage. On entering the great temple, he asked how each thing was done. When a friend died who had no home to go to, he said, It is for me to bury him. When a friend sent a gift, even of a carriage and horses, he did not bow. He only bowed for sacrificial meat. He did not sleep like a corpse. At home he unbent. On meeting a mourner, and were he a friend, his face changed. Even in his everyday clothes, when he met anyone in full dress, or a blind man, his face grew staid. When he met men in mourning, he bowed over the crossbar. To the census bearers, he bowed over the crossbar. Before choice meets, he rose with a changed look. At sharp thunder, or fierce wind, his look changed. In mounting his chariot, he stood straight and grasped the cord. When in his chariot he did not look round, speak fast, or point. Seeing a man's face, she rose, flew round, and settled. The master said, Hen pheasant on the ridge, it is the season, it is the season. He and Su Lu got the scent thrice, and then she rose. End of Book 10 Recorded by M. L. Cohen, Cleveland, Ohio This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recorded by M. L. Cohen, Cleveland, Ohio, January 17, 2007. The Sayings of Confucius, 
from the Harvard Classics, edited by Charles W. Eliot, Book Eleven. The Master said, Those who led the way in courtesy and music are deemed rude, and elegant the later school of courtesy and music. My want is to follow the leaders. The Master said, None of the men who were with me in Chen or Tsai come any more to my door. Of noble life were Yen Yuan, Min Si Chun, Zhan Po Nu, and Qi Gong. Sao Wu and Sao Kung were the talkers. Statesmen John Yu and Chu Lu. Su Yu and Su Sa were men of culture. The Master said, I get no help from Hu. No word, I say, but delights him. The master said, How good a son was Min Chen! In all that parents and brethren said of him, no hole was picked. Nan Zheng would thrice repeat, the scepter white. Confucius gave him his niece to wife. Chi Kang asked which of the disciples loved learning. Confucius answered, Yen Hu loved learning. By ill luck his life was cut short. Now there is no one. When Yen Yuan died, Yen Lu asked for the master's chariot to furnish an outer coffin. The master said, Whether gifted or not, each one speaks of his son. When Li died, he had an inner but not an outer coffin. I would not walk on foot to furnish an outer coffin. Following in the wake of the ministry, it would ill become me to walk on foot. When Yi Yan died, the master cried, Woe is me, I am undone of heaven, I am undone of heaven. When Yan Yuan died, the master gave way to grief. Those with him said, Sir, ye are giving way. The master said, Am I giving way? If for this man I did not give way to grief, for whom should I give way? When Yi Yan died, the disciples wished to bury him in state. The master said, this must not be. The disciples buried him in state. The master said, Hui treated me as a father. I have failed to treat him as a son. No, not I. It was your doing, my boys. Chi Lu asked, What is due to the ghosts of the dead? The master said, We fail in our duty to the living. Can we do our duty to the dead? He ventured to ask about death. We know not life, said the master. How can we know about death? Seeing the disciple men standing at his side and winning strength, Su Lu with warlike front, John Yu and Si Kung fresh and yank, the master's heart was glad. A man like you, he says, dies before his day. The men of Lu were building the long treasury. Min Su Shen said, Would not the old one do? Why must a new one be built? The master said, That man does not talk. When he speaks, he hits the mark. The master said, What has the lute of you to do twanging at my door? But when the disciples began to look down on Sulu, the master said, You has climbed to the hall, though he has not passed the closet door. Su Kong asked whether Shi or Shang were the better man. The master said, Shi goes too far, Shang goes not far enough. Then Shi is the better man, said Su Kong. Too far, replied the master, is no better than not far enough. The Chi was richer than the Duke of Chow. Chu added to his wealth by becoming his tax gatherer. The master said, he is no disciple of mind. Sound your drums to the attack, my boys. To I is simple, Shen is dull, she is smooth, you is coarse. The master said, Who is well nigh faultless, and oftentimes empty? Su will not bow to fate and hoards up substance, but his views are often sound. Su Chang asked, What is the way of a good man? The master said, he does not tread in footprints, neither can he gain the closet. The master said, 
Commend a man for plain speaking. He may prove a gentleman, or else but seeming honest. Sulu asked, Shall I do all I am taught? The master said, Whilst thy father and elder brothers live, how canst thou do all thou art taught? Jan Yu asked, Shall I do all I am taught? The master said, Do all thou art taught. King Si Hua said, You asked, Shall I do all I am taught? And you spake, sir, of father and elder brothers. Chiu said, Shall I do all I am taught? And he answered, Do all thou art taught. I am puzzled, and make bold to ask you, sir. The master said, Chu is bashful, so I egged him on. Yu has the pluck of two, so I held him back. When fear beset the master in Kuang, Yen Yan fell behind. The master said, I held thee as dead. He answered, While my master lives, durst I brave death? Chi Xuan John asked whether Shi Yu or John Chu could be called statesmen. The master said, I thought you would ask me some riddle, sir, and your text is Yu and Ju, A minister who does his duty to the king, and withdraws rather than do wrong, is called a statesman. As for Yu and Chu, I should call them tools. Who would do one's bidding, then? Neither would they do your bidding, said the master. If bidding slay king or father. Su Lu had Su Ka made governor of Pai. The master said, Thou art undoing a man's son. Su Lu said, What, with the people and the guardian spirits, must a man read books to come by knowledge? The master said, This is why I hate a glib tongue. The master said to Su Lu, Tseng Hai, Zhang Yu, and King Si Hua, as they sat beside him, I may be a day older than you, but forget that. You are wont to say, I am unknown. Well, had ye a name, what would ye do? Su Lu answered lightly, Give me charge of a land of a thousand chariots, crushed between great neighbors, overrun by soldiery and searched by famine. In three years' time I could put courage into the people and high purpose. The master smiled. What wouldst thou do to you? he said. He answered, Had I charge of sixty or seventy square miles, or from fifty to sixty square miles, in three years' time I would give the people plenty. As for courtesy, music, and the like, they would wait the rise of a gentleman. And what's what thou do, Chi? He answered, I speak of the things I fain would learn, not of what I can do. At service in the ancestral temple, or at the grand audience, clad in black robe and cap, I fain would fill a small part. And what's would thou do, Chen? Chen ceased to play, pushed his still-sounding lute aside, rose and answered. My choice would be unlike those of the other three. What harm in that, said the master? Each but spake his mind. In the last days of spring, all clad for the season, with five or six grown men and six or seven lads, I would bathe in the yi, be fanned by the breeze in the rain god's glade, and wander home with song. The master sighed and said, I hold with Tien. Chen Si stayed after the other three had left and said, What did ye think of what the others said, sir? Each but spake his mind, said the master. Why did ye smile at you, sir? Lands are swayed by courtesy, but what he said was not modest. That was why I smiled. But did not Chi Yu too speak of a state? Where could sixty or seventy square miles be found, or from fifty to sixty, that are not a state. And did not Chi Yi too speak of a state? Who but great vassals would there be in the ancestral temple, or at the grand audience? But if Chi Yi were to play a small part, who could fill a big one? End of Book 11 Recorded by M. L. Cohen, Cleveland, Ohio January 17, 2007.
This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recorded by M. L. Cohen, Cleveland, Ohio, January 2007. The Sayings of Confucius from the Harvard Classics, edited by Charles W. Eliot, Book 12. Yen Wan asked, What is love? The master said, Love is to conquer self and turn to courtesy. Could we conquer self and turn to courtesy for but one day, all mankind would turn to love. Does love flow from within, or does it flow from others? Yen Wan said, May I ask what are its signs? The master said, to be ever courteous of eye and ever courteous of ear, to be ever courteous in word and ever courteous in deed. Yen Wan said, Dull as I am, I hope to live by these words. Chang Kung asked, What is love? The master said, Without the door to behave as though a great guest were come to treat the people as though we tendered the high sacrifice, not to do unto others what we would not they should do unto us, to breed no wrongs in the state, and breed no wrongs in the home. Chung Kung said, Dull as I am, I hope to live by these words. Su Manu asked, What is love? The master said, Love is slow to speak. To be slow to speak, can that be called love? The master said, That which is hard to do, can it be lightly spoken? Sumanu asked, What is a gentleman? The master said, A gentleman knows neither sorrow nor fear. No sorrow and no fear, can that be called a gentleman? The master said, He finds no sin in his heart, so why should he sorrow? What should he fear? Sumanu cried sadly, All men have brothers, I alone have none. Su Se said, I have heard that life and death are allotted, that wealth and honors are in heaven's hand. A gentleman is careful and does not trip. He is humble towards others and courteous. All within the four seas are brethren. How can a gentleman mourn his lack of them? Su Chang asked, What is insight? The master said, To be unmoved by lap and wash of slander, or by plaints that pierce to the quick, may be called insight. Yea, whom lap and wash of slander, or plaints that pass to the quick, cannot move, may be called far-sighted. Su Kang asked, what is kingcraft? The master said, Food enough, troops enough, and a trusting people. Tzu Kong said, Were there no help for it, which could best be spared of the three? Troops, said the master. And were there no help for it, which could better be spared of the other two? Food, said the master. From of old all men die but without trust a people cannot stand. Chi Chi Chang said, A gentleman is all nature. What can art do for him? Alas, my lord, said Si Kong, how you speak of a gentleman. No team overtakes the tongue. Nature is no more than art. Art is no more than nature. Without the fur, a tiger or a leopard's hide is as the hide of a dog or goat. Du Gai said to you, Joe, in this year of dearth I have not enough for my wants. What should be done? He might tithe the people, answered you, Joe. A fifth is all too little, said the Duke. How could a tenth avail? When the people all live in plenty, asked you, Joe, will the king alone be in want? If the people are all in want, can the king alone live in plenty? Su Chang asked how to raise the mind and scatter delusions. The master said, Make faithfulness and truth thy masters, and follow the right.
the mind will be raised. We wish life to things we love, death to things we hate. To wish them both life and death is a delusion. Whether prompted by wealth, yet ye make a distinction. Ching Duke of Qi asked Confucius what is kingcraft. Confucius answered, When the king is king and the minister is minister, when the father is father and the son is son. True indeed, said the duke, were the king no king and the minister no minister, were the father no father and the son no son, could a guy get aught to eat, though grain were there? The master said, to stint a quarrel with half a word, you is the man. Sulu never slept over a promise. The master said, At hearing lawsuits I am no better than another. What is needed is to stay lawsuits. Su Chang asked, What is kingcraft? The master said, To be tireless of spirit and faithful at work. The master said, Breadth of reading and the ties of courtesy will also keep a man from error's path. The master said, A gentleman shapes the good in man. He does not shape the bad in him. Contrarywise the vulgar. Chi Kang asked Confucius how to rule. Confucius answered, To rule is to set straight. If we give an upright lead, sir, who will dare walk crooked? Chi Kang, being vexed by robbers, spake of it to Confucius. Confucius answered, But for your greed, sir, though you rewarded thieves, no man would steal. Chi Kang, speaking of kingcraft, said to Confucius, To help the good, should we kill the bad? Confucius answered, Sir, what need has a ruler to kill? Where you set on good, sir, your people would do good. The king's mind is the wind and grass are the minds of the people. Whither the wind blows, thither the grass bends. Su Chang asked, When may a scholar be called eminent? The master said, What dost thou mean by eminence? Su Chang answered, To be famous in the state and famous in his home. The master said, That is fame, not eminence. The eminent man is plain and straight. He loves right, weighs men's words, and scans their looks. At pains to step down to them, he will be eminent in the state, and eminent in his home. The famous man wears a mask of love, but his deeds belie it. He knows no misgivings, and fame will be his in the state, and fame will be his in the home. Whilst wandering through the rain God's glade with the master, Fan Chi said to him, May I ask how to raise the mind, amend evil, and scatter errors? The master said, A good question. Rate the task above the prize. Will not the mind be raised? Fight thine own faults, not the faults of others. Will not evil be mended? One angry morning, forget both self and kin. Is that no error? Fan Chi asked, What is love? The master said, To love mankind. He asked, What is wisdom? The master said, To know mankind. Fan Chi did not understand. The master said, Exalt the straight, put aside the crooked. The crooked will grow straight. Fan Chi withdrew, and meeting with Su He said to him, I was received by the master and asked him what is wisdom. The master answered, Exalt the straight, put aside the crooked. The crooked will grow straight. What did he mean? How rich a saying, said Su Se. When Shun was lord of the earth, he chose Kei Yao from the many, exalted him, and evil vanished. When Tang was lord of the earth, he chose Yi Yin from the many, exalted him, and evil vanished. Su Kong asked about friends. The master said, Talk faithfully to them, guide them with skill. If this prove vain, stop. Do not court shame. Si Tzu said, A gentleman gathers friends by culture, and props love with friendship. End of chapter 12
Recorded by M. L. Cohen, Cleveland, Ohio, January 2007. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. The Sayings of Confucius from the Harvard Classics, edited by Charles W. Eliot. Book 13. 1. Sulu asked how to rule. The master said, Lead the way, take pains. Asked to add more, he said, Never flag. 2. When steward of the Qi, Chung King asked how to rule, the master said, Let officers act first, overlook small faults, raise worth and talent. Chung Kung said, How shall I learn to know the worth and talent I have to raise? Raise those thou dost know, said the master, and those unknown to thee, will other men pass by? 3. Tsulu said, The king of Hui looks to you, sir, to govern. How shall ye begin? If need were, said the master, by putting names right. Indeed, said Sulu, this is far-fetched, sir. Why put them right? You, said the master, thou art ill-bred. On matters beyond his ken, a gentleman speaks with caution. If names are not right, words are misused. When words are misused, affairs go wrong. When affairs go wrong, courtesy and music droop. When courtesy and music droop, law and justice fail. And when law and justice fail them, a people can move neither hand nor foot. So a gentleman must be ready to put names into speech, to put words into deed. A gentleman is no wise careless of words. 4. Fan Chi'i asked to be taught husbandry. The master said, I cannot rank with an old husbandman. He asked to be taught gardening. The master said, I cannot rank with an old gardener. After Fan Chi'i had left, the master said, How small a man! If those above love courtesy, none will dare to slight them. If those above love right, none will dare to disobey. If those above love truth, none will dare to hide the heart. Then from the four corners of the earth folks will gather, their children on their backs. What need will there be for husbandry? 5. The master said, Though a man have conned three hundred poems, if he stands helpless when put to govern, if he cannot answer for himself when sent to the four corners of the earth, despite their number, what have they done for him? 6. The master said, The man of upright life is obeyed before he speaks. Commands even go unheeded where the life is crooked. 7. The master said, The governance of Lu and we are brothers. 8. Speaking of Ching, of the ducal house of Wei, the master said, He was wise in his private life. When he had begun saving, he said, This is much. When he grew better off, he said, Now we lack nothing. And when he was rich, he said, We live in splendor. 9. Whilst Yan Yu was driving him on the road to Wei, the master said, What numbers? Yan Yu said, Since numbers are here, what next is needed? Wealth, said the master. And after wealth, what next are needed? Teaching, said the master. 10. The master said, Had I power for a twelve month only, much could be done. In three years all were ended. 11. The master said, Could good men govern for an hundred years, cruelty would be vanquished, putting to death an end. How true are these words! 12. The master said, had we a king among men, a lifetime would pass ere love dawned. 13. The master said, What is governing to him who can rule himself? Who cannot rule himself, how should he rule others? 14. As the disciple Yan came back from court, the master said to him, Business of state kept me, he answered. Household business, said the master, though I am out of office, I had heard where their business is of state. 15. Duke Ting asked, Is there any one saying that can prosper a kingdom? Confucius answered, That is more than words can do. But a proverb says, Hard it is to be king, nor yet light to be minister. And did one know how hard it is to be king, might not this saying all but prosper a kingdom? And is there any one saying that can wreck a kingdom? That is more than words can do, Confuci Confucius answered. But a proverb says, my one joy as king is that none withstand what I say. Now if none withstand him when right, will it not be well? 
but if none withstand him when wrong, might not this saying all but wreck a kingdom? 16. The Duke of She asked, What is kingcraft? The master said to gladden those around us and draw men from afar. 17. Tsu Hsia, when governor of Chufu, asked how to rule. The master said, Never be in a hurry, shut thine eyes to small gains. Not done in a hurry is thorough, and an eye for small gain means big things undone. 18. The Duke of She told Confucius, among the upright men of my home, if the father steal a sheep, his son will bear witness. Confucius answered, Our people's uprightness is unlike that. The father screens his son, the son screens his father. There is uprightness in this. 19. Fenshi he asked, What is love? The master said, To be respectful at home, painstaking at work, faithful to all. Even among savages none of this may be dropped. 20. Tzu Kung asked, When can a man be called a good crown servant? The master said, In private life he wants a sense of shame. If sent to the four corners of the earth, he must not disgrace the king's commands. May I ask who would rank second? A man who his clansmen call dutiful and his neighbors call modest. May I ask who would rank next? A man who clings to his word and sticks to his course, a flinty little fellow, would perhaps come next. And how are the crown servants of today? What? The weights and measures men, said the master, are they worth reckoning? 21. The master said, As followers of the golden mean are not to be found, I have to work with ambitious and headstrong men. Ambitious men push forward, and there are things that headstrong men will not do. 22. The master said, The men of the South say, Unless steadfast, a man will make neither a wizard nor a leech. This is true. A falling off in merit will reap disgrace. The master said, Neglect of the omens, that is all. 23. The master said, A gentleman is pleasant, not fulsome. The vulgar are fulsome, but not pleasant. 24. Tsuk Kung said, Would it be right if a man were liked by all his neighbors? No, said the master. And would it be right if a man were hated by all his neighbors? No, said the master, it would be better if the good men of the neighborhood liked him, and the bad men of the neighborhood hated him. 25. The master said, A gentleman is easy to serve, and hard to please. Not but what is right pleases him. He fits his behest to the man. The vulgar are hard to serve, and easy to please. What is wrong may yet please them, but of their men they expect all things. 26. The master said, A gentleman is high-minded, not proud. The vulgar are proud, but not high-minded. 27. The master said, Strength and courage, simplicity and meekness, are akin to love. 28. Sulu asked, When can a man be called educated? The master said, A man who is earnest, encouraging, and kind may be called educated, earnest with friends and encouraging, kind toward his brothers. 29. The master said, Could a good man teach the people for seven years, they would be fit for arms also. 30. The master said, To take untaught men into battle is to cast them away. End of Book 13 This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. The Sayings of Confucius, from the Harvard Classics, edited by Charles W. Eliot. Book 14. 1. Sien asked, What is shame? The master said, Higher when right prevails, higher when wrong prevails, higher is always shame. 2. To eschew strife and boasting, spite and greed, can that be called love? The master said, I call that hard to do. I do not know that it is love. 3. The master said, A scholar who loves comfort is not worthy of the name. 4. The master said, When right prevails, be fearless of speech and fearless indeed. When wrong prevails, 
be fearless indeed, but soft of speech. 5. The master said, A man of worth can always talk, but talkers are not always men of worth. Love is always bold, though boldness is found without love. 6. Nangung Kuo said to Confucius, Yi was good at archery, Ao could push a boat over land, each died before his time. Yu and Ji toiled at their crops and won the world. 7. The master said, Gentlemen without love there may be, but the vulgar must ever be strangers to love. 8. The master said, Can one love, yet take no pains? Can he be faithful who gives no counsel? 9. The master said, The decrees were drafted by Pi Chen, criticized by Shi Shu, polished by the foreign minister Zi Yu, and given the final touches by Zi Chan of Dong Li. 10. Being asked what he thought of Zi Chan, the master said, A kind-hearted man. Asked what he thought of Zi Si, the master said, Of him? What I think of him. Asked what he thought of Guan Zhong, the master said, He was the man who drove the boar from the town of Bien and its three hundred households to end his days on coarse rice and no word of wrong could he find to say. 11. The master said, It is hard not to chafe at poverty, a light thing not to be proud of wealth. 12. The master said, Meng Gong Chuo is more than fit to be a steward to Zhao or Wei, but is not fit to be minister of Tung or Xue. 13. Tzu Lu asked what were a full-grown man. The master said, A man wise as Zhang Wu Zhong, greedless as Gong Chuo, bold as Zhuang of Bian, skillful as Ran Qiu, and graced with courtesy and music, might be called a full-grown man. But today who asks the like of a full-grown man? Who in sight of gain remembers right, in face of danger will risk his life, and cleaves to his word for a lifetime, however old the bond, him we must call a full-grown man. 14. Speaking of Gong Shu Wen, the master said to Gong Ming Jia, Is it true that thy master does not speak, nor laugh, nor take a gift? Gong Ming Jia answered, that is saying too much. My master speaks when it is time to speak, so none weary of his speaking. He laughs when he is merry, so none weary of his laughter. He takes what it is right to take, so none weary of his taking. It may be so, said the master, but is it? 15. The master said, When Zhang Wu Zhong Holding Fang asked Lu to appoint an heir, though he said he was not forcing his prince. I cannot believe it. 16. The master said, Duke Wen of Jin was deep, but dishonest. Duke Huan of Qi was honest, but shallow. 17. Zi Lu said, When Duke Huan slew the young Duke Jiu, Shao Hu died with him, but not Guan Zhong. Was this not want of love? The master said, Duke Huan gathered the nobles together without help from chariots of war through the might of Guan Zhong. What can love do more? What can love do more? 18. Zi Gong said, In becoming minister, Instead of dying with the young Duke Zhou when he was slain by Duke Huan, Guan Zhong showed want of love, it would seem. 
the master said, through Guan Zhong helping Duke Huan to bend the nobility and tame the world, men have fared the better from that day unto this. But for Guan Zhong we should wear our hair down our backs and the left arm bare. Or should he, like the ploughboy and his lass, their troth to keep, have drowned in a ditch, no man the wiser? 19. The minister Xian, once steward to Gong Shu Wen, went to audience of the duke together with Wen. When the master heard of this, he said, He is rightly called Wen cultured. 20. The master spake of the wickedness of Ling, duke of Wei. Kang said, If that be so, how does he escape ruin? Confucius answered, with Zhong Shu Yu in charge of the guests, the reader Tuo in charge of the ancestral temple, and Wang Sun Jia in charge of the troops, how should he come to ruin? 21. The master said, If the tongue have no fear, words are hard to make good. 22. Chen Cheng murdered Duke Jian. Confucius cleansed himself, went to court, and told Duke Ai, saying, Chen Hung has murdered his prince. Pray chastise him. The duke said, Tell the three chiefs. Confucius said, Following in the wake of the ministry, I dared not leave this untold. But the prince says, Tell the three chiefs. He told the three chiefs. It was vain. Confucius said, Following in the wake of the ministry, I dared not leave this untold. 23. Zilu asked how to serve the king. The master said, Never cheat him, withstand him to the face. 24. The master said, A gentleman's life leads upward, a vulgar life leads down. 25. The master said, Men of old learned for their own sake, the men of today learn for show. 26. Chu Bo Yu sent an envoy to Confucius. As they sat together, Confucius asked him, How is your lord busied? He answered, My lord tries to pair his faults and tries in vain. When the envoy had left, the master said, an envoy, an envoy indeed. 27. The master said, When not in office, discuss not policy. 28. Zeng Zi said, A gentleman is bent on keeping his place. 29. The master said, A gentleman is shamefast of speech, his deeds go further. 30. The master said, In three ways I fall short of a gentleman. Love is never vexed. Wisdom has no doubts. Courage is without fear. Zi Gong replied, That is what ye say, sir. 31. Zi Gong would compare one man with another. The master said, What talents Zi has? Now I have no time for this. 32. The master said, Sorrow not at being unknown, Sorrow for thine own shortcomings. 33. The master said, Not to expect falsehood, Nor look for mistrust, And yet to forestall them, Shows worth in a man. 34. Wei Sheng Mo said, how dost thou still find roosts to roost on, Chiu, unless by wagging a glib tongue? Confucius answered, I dare not wag a glib tongue, but I hate stubbornness. 35. The master said, A steed is not praised for his strength, but praised for his mettle. 36. One said, To mete out good for evil, how were that? 
"'And how would ye meet good?' said the master. "'Meet evil with justice. Meet good with good.' 37. The master said, "'Alas, no man knows me.' Tsze Gung said, "'Why do you say, sir, that no man knows you?' The master said, "'Never murmuring against heaven, nor finding fault with men, "'learning from the lowest, cleaving the heights, "'I am known but to one, but to heaven.' 38. Liao, the duke's uncle, spake ill of Zi Lu to Ji Sun. Zi Fu Jing Bo told this to Confucius, saying, My lord's mind is surely being led astray by the duke's uncle, but strength is yet mine to expose his body in the marketplace. The master said, The doom has fallen if truth is to win. It has fallen if truth is to lose. Can Liao, the duke's uncle, fight against doom? 39. The master said, Men of worth shun the world, the next best shun the land. Then come men who go at a look, then men who go at speech. 40. The master said, Seven men did so. 41. Zi Lu spent a night at Shiman. The gatekeeper asked him, Whence comest thou? From Confucius, he answered. The man who knows it is vain, yet cannot forbear to stir, said the gatekeeper. 42. When the master was chiming his sounding stones in way, a basket-bearer said, as he passed the door, His heart is full who chimes those stones. But then he added, For shame! What a tinkling note! If no one heed thee, have done. Wade the deep places, lift thy robe through the shallows. The master said, Where there's a will, that is lightly done. 43. Zhe Zhang said, What does the book mean by saying that Gao Zong, when mourning his predecessor, did not speak for three years? The master said, Why pick out Gao Zong? Men of old were all thus, for three years after the king had died, the hundred officers acted each for himself and obeyed the chief minister. 44. The master said, When those above love courtesy, the people are easy to lead. 45. Zi Lu asked, What is a gentleman? The master said, A man bent on shaping his mind. Is that all? said Zilu, on shaping his mind to give happiness to others. And is that all? On shaping his mind to give happiness to the people, said the master. To shape the mind and give happiness to the people, for this both Yao and Shun still pined. 46. Yuan Rang awaited the master squatting. The master said, Unruly when young, unmentioned as man, undying when old, spells good for nothing, and hit him on the leg with his staff. 47. When a lad from the village of Chue was made message-bearer, someone asked, saying, Is it because he has made progress? The master said, I have seen him sitting in a man's seat, seen him walking abreast of his elders, this shows no wish to improve, only hurry to be a man. End of Book 14「This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. The Sayings of Confucius from the Harvard Classics Edited by Charles W. Eliot Book 15 1. Ling, Duke of Wei, asked Confucius about the line of battle. Confucius answered, Of temple ware I have learned, arms I have not studied. On the morrow he went his way. In Chen, 
grain ran out, his followers grew too ill to rise. Zulu could not hide his vexation. Must gentlemen also face misery, he said. Of course a gentleman must face misery, said the master. It goads the vulgar to violence. 2. The master said, Dost thou not think, Zi, that I am a man who learns much and bears it in mind? Yes, he answered. Is it not so? No, said the master. I string all into one. 3. The master said, You, how few know what is worthy. 4. The master said, To rule doing nothing, that was Shun's way. What need to be doing? Self-respect and a kingly look are all. 5. Zhang asked how to get on. The master said, Be faithful and true of word. Let thy walk be plain and lowly. Thou wilt get on, though in savage land. If thy words be not faithful and true, the walk plain and lowly, wilt thou get on, though in thine own home? Standing, see these words ranged before thee. Driving, see them written upon the yoke. Then thou wilt get on. Zhang wrote them upon his girdle. 6. The master said, Straight indeed was the historian Yu, straight as an arrow when right prevailed, and straight as an arrow when wrong prevailed. What a gentleman was Chu Bo Yu. When right prevailed, he took office. When wrong prevailed, he rolled himself up in thought. 7. The master said, To keep silence to him who has ears to hear is to spill the man. To speak to a man without ears to hear is to spill thy words. Wisdom spills neither man nor word. 8. The master said, A high will or a loving heart will not seek life at cost of love. To fulfill love they will kill the body. 9. Zigong asked how to practice love. The master said, A workman bent on good work will first sharpen his tools. In the land that is thy home, serve the best men in power, and get thee friends who love. 10. Yen Yuan asked how to rule a kingdom. The master said, Follow the Xia seasons. Drive in the chariot of Yin. Wear the headdress of Zhou. Choose for music the Shao and its dance. Banish the strains of Zhong, and shun men of glib tongue, for wanton are the strains of Zhong. There is danger in a glib tongue. 11. The Master said, Without thought for far-off things there will be troubles near at hand. 12. The Master said, it is finished. I have met no one who loves good as he loves women. 13. The master said, Did not Zhang Wen filch his post? He knew the worth of Liu Xiaohui and did not stand by him. 14. The master said, By asking much of self and throwing little on others, ill feeling is put to flight. 15. The master said, Unless a man ask, Will this help? Will that help? I know not how to help him. 16. The master said, When all day long there is no talk of right, and sharp moves find favour, the company is in hard case. 17. The master said, a gentleman makes right his base, done with courtesy, spoken with deference, rounded with truth, right makes a gentleman. 18. The master said, His unworthiness vexes a gentleman. 
to live unknown cannot vex him. 19. The master said, A gentleman fears lest his name should die when life is done. 20. The master said, A gentleman looks within, the vulgar look unto others. 21. The master said, A gentleman is firm, not quarrelsome, a friend, not a partisan. 22. The master said, A gentleman does not raise a man for his words, nor scorn what is said for the speaker. 23. Zigong asked, Can one word cover the whole duty of man? The master said, Fellow feeling, perhaps. Do not do unto others what thou wouldst not they should do unto thee. 24. The master said, Of the men that I meet, whom do I decry, whom do I flatter? Or if I flatter, it is after trial. Because of this people, three lines of kings followed the straight road. 25. The master said, Even in my time an historian would leave a blank in his text, an owner of a horse would lend him to others to ride. Today it is so no more. 26. The master said, Honeyed words confound goodness, impatience of trifles confounds great projects. 27. The master said, the hatred of the many calls for search. The favour of the many calls for search. 28. The master said, The man can exalt the truth. Truth cannot exalt the man. 29. The master said, The fault is to cleave to a fault. 30. The master said, in vain have I spent in thought whole days without food, whole nights without sleep. Study is better. 31. The master said, A gentleman aims at truth. He does not aim at food. Ploughing may end in famine. Study may end in pay. But a gentleman pines for truth. He is not pined with poverty. 32. The master said, What the mind has won will be lost again unless love hold fast. A mind to understand and love to hold fast, without dignity of bearing, will go unhonoured. A mind to understand, love to hold fast, and dignity of bearing are incomplete without courteous ways. 33. The master said, A gentleman has no skill in trifles, but has strength for big tasks. The vulgar are skilled in trifles, but have no strength for big tasks. 34. The master said, Love is more to the people than fire and water. I have known men come to their death by fire and water. I have met no man whom love brought unto death. 35. The master said, When love is at stake, yield not to an army. 36. The master said, A gentleman is consistent, not changeless. 37. The master said, A servant of the king honours work and rates pay last. 38. The master said, all educated men are peers. 39. The master said, Mingle not in projects with men whose ways are not thine. 40. The master said, The whole end of speech is to be understood. 41. When the music master Mien was presented, the master, on coming to the steps, said, here are the steps. On reaching the mat, the master said, 
here is the mat. When all were seated, the master told him, such a one is here, and such a one is here. After the music master had left, Zhang said, is this the way to speak to a music master? The master said, surely it is the way to help a music master. End of book 15「ザ・リブリボックス・レコーディング」「オーリブリボックス・レコーディング」は in the public domain。For more information or to volunteer, please visit librivox.org。Recorded by Paul Z, Hong Kong, January the 17th, 2007。The Sayings of Confucius from the Harvard Classics。Edited by Charles W. Eliot. Book 16. 1. The Qi was about to chastise Zhuan Yu. Zhen Yu and Qi Lu, being received by Confucius, said to him, The Qi is going to deal with Zhuan Yu. Confucius said, After all, Qi Lu, are ye not in the wrong? The kings of old made Zhuan Yu lord of Tongmang. It is within the borders of the realm. Moreover, in a vassal state, ought it to be chastised? Zhen Yu said, Our lord wishes it. We, his ministers, are both against it. Confucius said, Chiu. Zhao Zhen was wont to say, Put forth thy strength in the ranks. Leave them rather than do wrong. Who would choose as guide one that is no prop in danger, who cannot lift him when fallen? Moreover, what thou sayest is wrong. If a tiger or a buffalo escape from the pen, if tortoiseshell or jade be broken in the case, who is to blame? Zhen Yu said, But Zhuan Yu is strong and close to Pi. If not seized today, it will bring sorrow in after times on our sons and grandsons. Confucius said, To make excuses instead of saying, I want it, is hateful, chill, to a gentleman. I have heard that unlikeness of lot grieves a king or a chief, not fewness of men. Unrest grieves him, not poverty. Had each his share, there would be no poverty. In harmony is number. Peace prevents a fall. So if far-off tribes will not bend, Win them by encouraging worth and learning. And when they come in, give them peace. But now, when far-off tribes will not bend, ye too, helpers of your Lord, cannot win them. The kingdom is rent asunder. Ye are too weak to defend it. Yet spear and shield ye would call up through the land. The sorrows of Qi's grandsons, I fear, will not rise in Zhuan Yu. They will rise within the palace wall. 2. Confucius said, When right prevails below heaven, courtesy, music, and punitive wars flow from the sun of heaven. When wrong prevails below heaven, courtesy, music, and punitive wars flow from the feudal princes. When they flow from the feudal princes, they will rarely last for ten generations. When they flow from the prince's ministers, they will rarely last for five generations. When courtiers sway a country's fate, they will rarely last for three generations. When right prevails below heaven, power does not lie with ministers. 
When right prevails below heaven, common men do not argue. 3. Confucius said, For five generations, its income has passed from the ducal house. For four generations, power has lain with ministers. And humbled, therefore, are the sons and grandsons of the free Huan. 4. Confucius said, There are three friends that do good, and three friends that do harm. The friends that do good are a straight friend, a sincere friend, and a friend who has hurt much. The friends that do harm are a smooth friend, a fawning friend, and a friend with a glib tongue. 5. Confucius said, There are three joys that do good, and three joys that do harm. The joys that do good are joy in dissecting courtesy and music, joy in speaking of the good in men, and joy in a number of worthy friends. The joys that do harm are joy in pomp, joy in roving, and joy in the joys of the feast. 6. Confucius said, Men who wait upon princes fall into three mistakes. To speak before the time has come is rashness. Not to speak when the time has come is secrecy. To speak heedless of looks is blindness. 7. Confucius said, A gentleman has three things to guard against. In the days of thy youth, ere thy strength is steady, beware of lust. When manhood is reached, in the fullness of strength, beware of strife. In old age, when thy strength is broken, beware of greed. 8. Confucius said, a gentleman holds three things in awe. He is in awe of heaven's doom. He is in awe of great men. He is awed by the speech of the holy. The vulgar are blind to doom and hold it not in awe. They are saucy towards the great, and of the speech of the holy they make the game. 9. Confucius said, the best men are born wise. Next come those who grow wise by learning, then learned narrow minds. Narrow minds without learning are the lowest of the people. 10. Confucius said, A gentleman has nine aims. To see clearly, to understand what he hears, to be warm in manner, Dignified in bearing, faithful of speech, painstaking at work, to ask when in doubt, in anger to think of difficulties, in sight of gain to remember right. 11. Confucius said, In sight of good to be filled with longing, to regard evil as scolding to the touch. I have met such men. I have heard such words. 12. To dwell apart and search the will. To unriddle truth by righteous life. I have heard these words, but met no such men. 13. Cheng, Duke of Qi, had a thousand teams of horses. But the people, on his death day, found naught in him to praise. Po Yi and Xu Qi starved at the foot of Shou Yang, and men today still sung their praises. 14. Is not this the clue to that? 15. Chan Kang asked Po Yu, 
apart from us have ye heard aught sir he answered no once as i sped across the hall where my father stood alone he said to me dost thou study poetry i answered no who does not study poetry he said has no holes on words i withdrew and studied poetry another day as i sped across the hall where he stood alone he said to me dost thou study courtesy i answered no who does not study courtesy he said loses all foothold i withdrew and studied courtesy these two things i have heard chan kang withdrew and cried gladly i asked one thing and get free i hear of poetry i hear of courtesy and i hear too that a gentleman keeps aloof from his son Sixteen. A king speaks of his wife as my lady. She calls herself handmaid. Her subjects call her our royal lady. Speaking to foreigners, they say our little queen. Foreigners also call her the royal lady. End of book sixteen. Recorded by Paul Z. Hong Kong, January the 17th, 2007. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recorded by Paul Z. Hong Kong, January the 19th, 2007. The Sayings of Confucius from the Harvard Classics, edited by Charles W. Eliot. Book 17. 1. Yang Ho wished to see Confucius. Confucius did not visit him. He sent Confucius a sucking pig. Confucius chose a time when he was out and went to thank him. They met on the road. He said to Confucius, Come, let us speak together. To cherish a gem and undo the kingdom, is that love? It is not, said Confucius. To be fond of power and let each chance of office slip, is that wisdom? It is not, said Confucius. The days and months glide by, the years do not tarry for us. True, said Confucius. I must take office. 2. The master said, Men are near to each other at birth, the lives they lead asunder them. 3. The master said, only the wisest and the stupidest of men never change. 4. As the master drew near to Wu Chang, he heard songs of lute and song. Why use an ox knife to kill a fowl? said the master with a pleased smile. Zhu Yu answered, Master, I have heard you say of yore, a gentleman who has conned the truth will love mankind. Poor folk who have conned the truth are easy to rule. My boys, said the master, Yen is right. I spake before in play. 5. Gongshan Fu Zhao held Pi in rebellion. He summoned the master, who fain would have gone. Julu said in displeasure, This cannot be. Why must ye go to Gongshan? The master said, This lord summons me. And would that be all? 
could I not make an Easter jowl of him that employed me? 6. Zhu Chang asked Confucius, What is love? Love, said Confucius, is to mete out five things to all below heaven. May I ask what they are? Modesty and bounty, said Confucius, truth, earnestness and kindness. Modesty escapes insult, bounty wins the many, truth gains men's trust, earnestness brings success, kindness is the key to men's work. 7. T.C. summoned the master, who fain would have gone. Julu said, Master, I have heard you say of yore, when the man in touch with the soul does evil, a gentleman stands aloof. T.C. holds Zhong Mo in rebellion. How, sir, could ye join him? Yes, I said so, answered the master. But is not a thing called hard that cannot be ground thin, white if steeping will not turn it black? And am I a gourd? Can I hang without eating? 8. The master said, Hast thou heard the six words, you, or the six they sink into? He answered, No. Sit down that I may tell thee. The thirst for love, without love of learning, sinks into fondness. Love of knowledge, without love of learning, sinks into presumption. Love of truth, without love of learning, sinks into cruelty. Love of uprightness, without love of learning, sinks into harshness. Love of courage, without love of learning, sinks into turbulence. Love of strength, without love of learning, sinks into oddity. 9. The master said, My boys, why do ye not study poetry? Poetry would ripen you, teach you insight, fellow feeling, and forbearance. Show you first your duty to your father, then your duty to the king and would teach you the names of many birds and beasts, plants and trees. Ten. The master said to Po Yu, Hast thou conned the Zhou Nan and Shao Nan? Who has not conned the Zhou Nan and Shao Nan is as a man standing with his face to the wall. Eleven. The master said, Courtesy, courtesy, is the cry. But are jade and silk the whole of courtesy? Harmony, harmony, is the cry. But are bells and drums the whole of harmony? 12. The master said, A fierce outside and a weak core. Is it not like a poultry fellow, like a thief who crawls through a hole in the wall? 13. The master said, The bane of all things noble is the patent citizen. 14. The master said, To proclaim each truth as soon as learned to the highway side is to lay waste the soul. 15. The master said, How can one serve the king with a sordid colleague, itching to get what he wants trembling to lose what he has. This trembling to lose what he has may lead him anywhere. 16. The master said, Men of old had three failings, which have, perhaps, died out today. Ambitious men of old were not nice. Ambitious men today are unprincipled. Masterful men of old were rough. Masterful men today are quarrelsome. Simple men of old were straight simple men today are false. That is all. 17. The master said, 
honeyed words and flattering looks seldom speak of love. 18. The master said, I hate the ousting of scarlet by purple. I hate the strains of Chang, confounders of sweet music. I hate a sharp tongue, the ruin of kingdom and home. 19. The master said, I long for silence. Zhu Gong said, If ye, sir, were silent, what would your disciples have to tell? The master said, Does heaven speak? The seasons fall revolve, and all things multiply. Does heaven speak? 20. Zhu Pei wished to see Confucius. Confucius excused himself on the plea of sickness. As the messenger went out, Confucius took a lute and sang to it, so that he should hear. 21. Zai Wu asked about the three years' mourning. He thought one enough. If for three years' pomp is scouted by the gentry, will not courtesy suffer? If music stop for three years, will not music decay? The old grain vanishes. The new springs up. The round of woods for the fire drill is ended in one year. The master said, Feeding on rice, clad in brocade, couldst thou feel happy? I could feel happy, he answered. Then do what makes thee happy. A gentleman, when in mourning, has no taste for sweets, no ear for music. He is unhappy in his home, and so he forsakes these things. But since thou art happy in them, keep them. When Zai War had left, the master said, A man without love. At the age of three, a child first leaves his parents' arms, and three years is the time for mourning everywhere below heaven. But did you enjoy for three years a father's and a mother's love? 22. The master said, Bad it is when a man eats his fill all day and has naught to task the mind. Could he not play at checkers? Even that were better. 23. Zulu said, Does a gentleman honor courage? The master said, Right comes first for a gentleman. Courage without sense of right makes rebels of the great and robbers of the poor. 24. Zhu Gong said, Does a gentleman also hate? He does, said the master. He hates the sounding of evil deeds. He hates men of low estate who slander their betters. He hates courage without courtesy. He hates daring matched with blindness. And Chu, he added, does thou hate too? I hate those who mistake spying for wisdom. I hate those who take want of deference for courage. I hate evil speaking, clothed as honesty. 25. The master said, Only girls and servants are hard to train. Draw near to them. They grow unruly. Hold them off. They pay you with spite. 26. The master said, When a man of forty is hated, it will be so to the end. End of Book 17 Recorded by Paul Z, Hong Kong, January the 19th, 2007. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recorded by Paul Z, Hong Kong, January the 30th, 2007.
2007. The Sayings of Confucius from the Harvard Classics Edited by Charles W. Eliot Book 18 1. The Lord of Wei went into exile. The Lord of Qi became a slave. Pekan died for his reproofs. Confucius said, In three of the yin there was love. 2. When Liu Xiaohui was judge, he was thrice dismissed. Men said, Why not leave, sir? He answered, Whither could I go and not be thrice dismissed for upright service? To do crooked service, what need to leave the land of my forefathers? 3. Cheng, Duke of Qi, speaking of how to treat Confucius, said, I could not treat him as I do the Qi. I should set him between Qi and Meng. Again he said, I am old, I have no use for him. Confucius went his way. 4. Qi Huan accepted the gift of singing girls from the men of Qi. For three days, no court was held. Confucius went his way. 5. Qie Yu, the mad head of Chu, as he passed Confucius, sang, Phoenix, bright Phoenix, thy glory is ended. Think of the future, the past can't be mended. Up and away, the court is today with danger attended. Confucius alighted and fain would have spoken with him. But hurriedly he made off, no speech was to be had of him. 6. Chang Zhu and Qie Ni were working together in the fields. Confucius, as he passed by, sent Zhu Lu to ask after a ford. Chang Zhu said, Who is that holding the reins? Kong Chiu answered Zhu Lu. What? Kong Chiu of Lu? The same, said Zhu Lu. He knows the ford said Chang Zhu. Zhu Lu asked Qian Yi, Who are ye, sir? He answered, I'm Chong Yu, the disciple of Kong Chiu of Lu? Yes, said Zhu Lu. The world is one seething torrent, answered Qian Yi. What men can guide it? Were it not better to choose a master who flees the world, than a master who flees this man and that man? And he went on hoeing without stop. Zhu Lu went back and told the master, whose face fell. Can I herd with birds and beasts? he said. Whom but these men can I choose as fellows? And if all were right with the world, I should have no call to set it straight. 7. Zhu Lu, having fallen behind, met an old man bearing a basket on his staff. Zhu Lu asked him, Have you seen the master, sir? The old man answered, Thou dost not toil with my limbs, nor canst thou tell one grain from another. Who is thy master? And planting his staff in the ground, he began weeding. Zhu Lu bowed and stood before him. He kept Zhu Lu for the night, killed a fowl, prepared millet, feasted him, and presented his two sons. On the morrow, Zhu Lu went to the master. 
and told what had happened. The master said, He is in hiding. He sent Zhu Lu back to see him. But when he reached the house, the men had left. Zhu Lu said, Not to take office is wrong. If the ties of old and young are binding, why should the claim of king or minister be set aside? Wishing to keep his person clean, he flouts a foremost duty. A gentleman takes office at the call of right, aware though he be that the cause is lost. 8. Po Yi, Shu Qi, Yu Zhong, Yi Yi, Zhu Chang, Liu Xiahui, and Shao Lin wire men who fled the world. The master said, Po Yi and Shu Qi will not bend the will or shame the body. We can but say that Liu Xiahui and Shao Lin bends the will and shamed the body. Their words jumped with duty. Their deeds answered our hopes. We may say of Yu Zhong and Yi Yi that they lived in hiding, but gave the rein to the tongue. They were clean in person. Their retreat was timely. But I'm unlike all of these. I know not must or must not. 9. Qi, the chief musical conductor, went to Qi. Khan, the conductor at the second meal, went to Chu. Liao, the conductor at the third meal, went to Chai. Chue, the conductor at the fourth meal, went to Qin. The drum master Fang Shu crossed the river. The tambourine master Wu crossed the Han. Yang, the assistant band master, and Xiang, who played the sounding stones, crossed the sea. 10. The Duke of Zhao said to the Duke of Lu, A prince does not forsake kinsmen nor offend great vessels by neglect. He will not discard an old servant unless he have big cause. He asks perfection of no man. 11. Zhao had eight officers, Po Ta and Po Ko, Zhong Tu and Zhong Hu, Shu Ye and Shu Xia, Qi Sui and Qi Kua. End of book 18. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. The Sayings of Confucius from the Harvard Classics edited by Charles W. Eliot, Book 19. 1. Zhe Zhang said, The scholar who in danger will stake his life, who in sight of gain remembers right, who is lowly in heart at worship, and sad at heart when mourning, may pass muster. 2. Zhe Zhang said, Goodness blindly clutched, faith that lacks simplicity, can they be said to be, or said not to be? 3. The disciples of Zi Xia asked Zi Zhang about friendship. Zi Zhang said, What does Zi Xia say? They answered, Zi Xia says, Cling to worthy friends, push the unworthy away. Zi Zhang said, I was taught otherwise. A gentleman honours worth and bears with the many. He applauds goodness and pities weakness. Am I a man of great worth? What could I not bear with in men? Am I a man without worth? Men will push me away. Why should I push others away? 
for. Zi Xia said, Though there is no trade without interest, a gentleman will not follow one, lest it clog the mind at length. 5. Zi Xia said, Who recalls each day what fails him? Who each month forgets nothing won? He may indeed be called fond of learning. 6. Zi Xia said, Through wide learning and singleness of aim, through keen questions and searchings of heart, we come to love. 7. Zi Xia said, To learn their trade, apprentices work in a shop. By study, a gentleman reaches the truth. 8. Zi Xia said, The vulgar always gloss their faults. 9. Zi Xia said, A gentleman alters thrice. Seen from afar, he looks stern. As we draw near, he thaws. But the sound of his words is sharp. 10. Zi Xia said, A gentleman lays no burdens on the people until they have learned to trust him. Unless they trusted him, they would think him cruel. Until he is trusted, he does not reprove. Unless he were trusted, it would seem fault-finding. 11. Zi Xia said, If we keep within the bounds of honour, we may step to and fro through propriety. 12. Zi Yo said, The disciples, the boys of Zi Xia, can sprinkle and sweep the floor, answer when spoken to, and enter or leave a room, but what can come of branches without root? When Zi Xia heard this, he said, Yen Yo is wrong. In training a gentleman, because we teach one thing first, shall we flag before reaching the next? Thus plants and trees vary in size. Should a gentleman's training bewilder him? To absorb it first and last, none but the holy are fit. 13. Zi Xia said, Crown servants should use their spare strength for study. A scholar with his spare strength should serve the crown. 14. Zi Yo said, Mourning should stretch to grief, and stretch no further. 15. Zi Yo said, My friend Zhang can do things that are hard, but he is void of love. 16. Zeng Zi said, So magnificent is Zhang that to do as love bids is hard when at his side. 17. Zeng Zi said, I have heard the master say, Man never shows what is in him unless when mourning one near to him. 18. Zeng Zi said, I have heard the master say, In all else we may rival the piety of Meng Zhuang, but in not changing his father's ministers or his father's rule, he is hard to rival. 19. The Meng made Yang Fu criminal judge, who asked Zeng Zi about his duties. Zeng Zi said, The gentry have lost their way, and the people long been distraught. When thou dost get at the heart of a crime, be moved to pity, not puffed with joy. 20. Zi Gong said, The wickedness of Zhou was not so great. Thus let princes beware of living in a sink where the filth of the world all streams together. 21. Zi Gong said, The faults of a prince are like the darkening of sun or moon. The fault is seen of all, and when he breaks free, all men admire. 22. Gong Sun Chao of Wei asked Zi Gong, Where did Zhong Ni get his learning? Zi Gong said, 
The law of one and wool has not fallen into ruin, but lives in men. The big in big men, the small in small men. No man is empty of the law of one and wool. How should the master not learn it? What need had he for a set teacher? 23. Shu Sun Wu Shu, talking to some lords at court, said, Zi Gong is a greater man than Zhong Ni. Zi Fu Jing Bo told this to Zi Gong. Zi Gong said, This is like the palace and its wall. My wall stretches to the shoulder. Peeping over, one sees the goodly home within. The master's wall is many fathoms high. Unless he enter the gate, no man can see the beauty of the ancestral temples, the wealth of the hundred officers. And if but few men gain the gate, is my lord not right to speak as he does? 24. Shu Sun Wu Shu decried Zhong Ni. Zi Gong said, It is labor lost. Zhong Ni cannot be cried down. The greatness of other men is a mound that can be overleaped. Zhong Ni is the sun or moon that no man can overleap. To run into death, though a man were ready, how could he hurt the sun or moon? His want of sense would but show the better. 25. Chen Zichin said to Zi Gong, Sir, your humility is overdone. In what way is Zhong Ni your better? Zi Gong said, By a word a gentleman betrays wisdom. By a word his want of wisdom. Words are not to be lightly spoken. None can come up to the master, as heaven is not to be climbed by steps. Had the master power in the land, the saying would come true, All that he plants takes root, whither he leads men follow. The peace he brings draws men, his touch tunes them to harmony. Honoured in life, he is mourned when dead. Who can come up to him? End of Book 19This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. The Sayings of Confucius from the Harvard Classics Edited by Charles W. Eliot Book 20 1. Yao said, Hail to thee, Shun! The number that the heavens are telling falls on thee. Keep true hold of the golden mean. Should there be stress or want within the four seas, the gift of heaven will pass for ever. Shun laid the same commands on you. Tang said, I, thy child, Li, make bold to offer this black steer and make bold to proclaim before thee, Almighty Lord, that I dare not forgive sin, nor hold down thy servants. Search them, O Lord, in thine heart. Visit not my sins on the ten thousand hamlets. The sins of the ten thousand hamlets visit upon my head. Jo bestowed great gifts, and good men grew rich. Loving hearts are better than men that are near of kin. All the people throw the blame upon me alone. He attended to weights and measures, revised the laws, and restored broken officers. On all sides order reigned. He revived states that had perished, and gave back fiefs that had reverted. He called forth men from hiding. All hearts below heaven turned to him. The people's food, burials, and worship he held to be of moment. His bounty gained the many. His truth won the people's trust. His earnestness brought success. His justice made men glad. 2. Zhang asked Confucius, How should men be governed? The master said, 
He who would govern men must honour the five graces, spurn the four vices. Zhang said, What are the five graces? The master said, A gentleman is kind but not wasteful. He burdens but does not embitter. He is covetous, not sordid. High-minded, not proud. He inspires awe and not fear. Zhang said, What is meant by kindness without waste? The master said, To further what furthers the people, is not that kindness without waste? If burdens be sorted to strength, who will grumble? To covet love and win love, is that sordid? Few or many, small or great, all is one to a gentleman. He dare not slight any man. Is not this to be high-minded and not proud? A gentleman straightens his robe and settles his face. He is stern, and men look up to him with dread. Is not this to inspire awe and not fear? Zhang said, What are the four vices? The master said, To leave untaught and then kill is cruelty. To ask full tale without warning is tyranny. To give careless orders and be strict when the day comes is robbery. To be stingy in rewarding men is littleness. 3. The master said, A man who is blind to doom can be no gentleman. Without a knowledge of courtesy we must want foothold. Without a knowledge of words there is no understanding men. End of Book 20 and end of The Sayings of Confucius from the Harvard Classics, edited by Charles W. Eliot.